Welcome back everyone! In today's video I'll be showing you how to install the newest in backlight innovation for the Game Boy Advance, the IPS full viewing angle screen from funnyplaying.com. Think of this as an HD Game Boy screen. For every one pixel that the AGS 101 screen has, this one has four. I've been playing on the screen for about a week now and I've been loving the colors and quality. When you receive your kit, it comes with an offset glass screen lens, the foam border for the screen, the ribbon cable, and of course the screen itself. Since the point of this video is to install the screen so that it is centered in the viewing window, we are not going to use this lens. We'll use this one instead. First thing we're going to do is trim the inside of the shell so that the screen fits better inside of the viewing window. You can see right inside of the edge there's a little raised ridge. That needs to be trimmed so it is flush. We'll do that with a pair of flush cutters. So I'm going to start right here in the middle and just kind of keep them flat, kind of chip away at it. I kind of keep my hand over it so that the pieces don't fly all over the place so much. Once you have it pretty flush, it's nice to use a Dremel tool to kind of grind this down a little bit farther so you can get it smooth and flush against the inside of the shell. If you don't have a Dremel tool, you can use a little file as well. Once you have it all filed down, it should look nice and flush like this. Next, we need to take out this side wall. This part can get a little tricky, so work slow and be careful. We are going to cut out the side of the wall that holds the start and select button. This won't affect the functionality at all. Just go a little bit at a time. Retromodding's written installation guide is super helpful when putting this together. I have it linked in the description. Now I'm gonna cut this part of the wall right here. So I cut right here. You can see, that's where it's connected to the D-pad and then right up here is where it's connected to where the start and select is. Just kind of separate those and then just cut a bunch of little notches in the wall that you can break out. By just like twisting them off and then clip on them. Like I said, small chunks, a little at a time. And you can do this with a craft knife as well, but I think I've, you have more control with the cutters. Oh, this is the part. Gotta be a little bit careful. Now we have to cut this piece of wall out, but be careful not to remove this part that holds the left trigger. Cut very small parts out at a time. And when it's all done, it should look something like this. Now we can lay in the foam spacer provided in the kit. You will need some double-sided foam tape as well. I ordered mine on Amazon. This is kind of a 
awkward to put in because of the way it kind of bends when you unpeel it. But basically the corners right here are gonna go in the corners that are still right here. And then this will line up like that. And then same thing, lay it down. Kind of push it, guide it into place. Make sure it's not creeping over the edge because then you'll see it. Take my file and kind of push it down into the corners. So it's all flat. And you don't have to peel off the back of this to make it sticky. You can just leave it just like that. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and cut a piece of foam tape to go in this corner right here. This pushes the screen to the right so that it centers up. end up being a little strip that looks like this. And I'll go ahead and place it right in there like that. So now we have our foam on the side right here. I'm gonna just go ahead and drop the LCD in there just to make sure everything fits before we move on. So I'm gonna put it in left first against the foam and then it should just pop right in, no force. I like that. Now let's set that aside and prepare the ribbon cable. These ribbon cables are nice because they can be used with both the 32 pin and the 40 pin GBAs. I'm using the 40 pin one, so let's put Kapton tape over the 32 pin since it won't be used. I'm putting Kapton tape over the majority of the rest of the ribbon as well, just to prevent shorting. But we're gonna wanna make sure that these three connections here are still exposed because those are for the brightness control. This option isn't necessary, so if you don't want to do this, feel free to skip this step. It's the part of the ribbon that says L, R, and select. Go ahead and put a little bit of solder on each of these solder points. Then we will go over to the GBA board and solder in three wires. Mine are all about four inches long. So the points we're gonna add some solder to are the point that says TP2 right here, TP9 and TP8. So now you can go ahead and solder the wires in. I'll start with TP9 over here, which is the left trigger. I like to do it like this so that it can wrap around like that. Next one I'll do is TP2, which is select. And then TP8, which is R. It's now time to install the screen. Make sure to peel off the protective film. Take the GBA shell and drop the screen in gently. First plug the ribbon cable into the screen itself. Now I'm going to solder the wires into the ribbon cable. R goes to R. Select goes to select. And left goes to left. Go ahead and plug your ribbon in and lay it like this. Now we're gonna cut a piece of foam tape about this size and we're gonna stick it right here. This helps hold the screen down so that it doesn't fall into the system.
Now let's put it all back together and see how it works. Before we put this back together, let's go ahead and put a little bit of tape on these wires so that they go where we want them to go. We'll put a little piece right here. Kind of hold that there. And then another little piece right here, just to make sure that the wires stay out of the way of the screw posts. Tuck that in. Let's go ahead and pop in the battery. See how she looks. Looking good. And there we go. I'll be posting a video soon comparing this screen to the AGS-101 screen, so be on the lookout for that. As always, links for everything, including Retromodding's install guide, can be found in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.